So, uh, I don't know what's good for the country as a whole. Anybody here the whole country? There is no such thing as the country as a whole. I, I, I'll get, your, I'll get to the, the details. And there is no, I, I, I want to get away from, I don't, like, um, I don't like concepts like the public interest, the common good. None of us are the common. I don't know what the common good is. I have, you know, most of us, when we put us in a group, disagree about almost everything. So what's good for all of us? Nothing. Right? Freedom is good for all of us. So let's take this situation. Employers, it's in their self-interest to pay their employees the least of money possible. Is that even true? Now, I'm an employer. I have about 50 employees who work for me. And I can tell you that's not true for a number of reasons. One, if I don't pay them what they're worth, they're going to leave. I just had one of my senior vice presidents leave because somebody else was willing to pay her more. Why? Because I was underpaying her for her skill. My mistake, I screwed up, she left, and I'm suffering the consequences. I have to go out there into the marketplace, find somebody else. So employees are not stupid. If you pay them less than what they're worth, they're going to find somebody who will. Imagine you're a competitor of nine. Imagine we're both producing widgets or whatever you want to fill in the blank. And I'm paying my workers less. What are you going to do? And, and they're producing a huge amount, so I'm making a lot of money off my employees. What are you going to do? You're going to offer them a little bit more. And I see you doing that, and I'm going to offer them, because I need workers, I'm going to offer them even more. A great example of this was in the auto industry in the 30s, I think it was, 1930s. And Ford, one day, woke up and said, you know what? The, way, the best way for me to make money is to get the best workers possible, the most productive workers out there. And the way to do that is I'm going to double all the wages in my factories. And he literally doubled them. And what happened? All the workers at all his competitors, who were the best, not the worst, because if you're a bad worker, nobody's going to pay you the top salary. All left his competitors and came to work for him, and he had the <laughs> best employees in the country. So markets, when functioning properly, drive wages up, not down, because you're becoming more and more productive with the investment of capital. That's how people become more productive. They learn, they study, they ex get experience, their productivity goes up, and their wages go up to reflect it. And if they don't, they go and work for somebody else who will pay them. And that's, how did, how, did, how did we get a middle class in the 19th century? We got a middle class exactly because of that phenomenon. That is the dynamics of the market. 